In this video, I'll demonstrate how to repair an E-Flight Selectra 2-cell LiPo battery charger that has a blown capacitor. These chargers usually come bundled with E-Flight UMX series Ultra Micro RC airplanes. If you are not interested in hearing my backstory about this issue, please skip the first 5 minutes. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. About 7 years ago, I purchased this E-Flight UMX Carbon Cup SS Bind and Fly airplane on eBay. And uh, it was used. I am a bargain hunter, so I always hunt for great deals. And this one I got probably, I think, like, like half price. The only problem was, you know, in the description was like lightly used. It's, it's really lightly used. I, I didn't see any damage. But there were one of the uh, servo covers for the aileron, the right aileron was missing. So I got it. It came and then. I connected the battery, you know, trying to bind to my Spectrum DX6i, and it did. And then I was just doing the flight testing, and then I realized this, you know, right air alarm was not moving. The left one is moving. So it had this servo that controls the right air alarm was faulty. Not just missing the cover, but it was faulty. So I reached out to the seller. The seller said, I'm sorry. And he refunded me for the price of a new servo. So I got that, I ordered it, I got it. But while I was at it, I also ordered the servo cover and also a spare prop. So everything is good. But then, you know, I fell out of the RC aircraft hobby. I start flying uh, real airplanes. Now, fast forward seven years, I am back to the hobby and I have never flown this. And I was so excited, I said, I'm going to charge up the battery. So it came, it comes with this little 2S 7.4 volt battery. But it has a terrible charge plug. So this is the plug that you use for electrical power and also for balance charging. My charger does not take this kind of plug. So good thing it came with also this Selectra lipo charger specifically made for these kind of batteries so it fits in without any problem so it goes in like this to this port and to the in, on the other side you need to provide a 12 volt dc power and it came with these alligator clips so the idea is you connect it to your car's battery charge it up it's great if you're out on the field near your car and charging but it is very inconvenient where you're at home being a person always liking to use old stuff, I had a, a lot of old stuff. And one of those had this uh, AC-DC adapter for 12 volts. I double checked the polarity and the size and they fit great. So, and this was from an old D-Link Vonage router. So I wasn't using it anymore. So I connected the battery, you know, connected the adapter and then pressed this button to charge. And then there was a loud bang that came from this charger. It scared the bejesus out of me, of course. And then uh, after I stopped shaking, <laughs> I opened up the battery cover. So I took off the uh, screws already. So I'm just going to open and show what happened. I opened this cover and then found there were like little pieces inside. And if you look here, let me focus on it. This used to be a capacitor, like this one. It was a capacitor like this one. And then there were parts of the capacitor, but you know the, the top part was missing. So apparently it got old, maybe the electrolyte was uh, deteriorating, and when I connected to DC power, it blew up. And then, of course, the first thing I did was, all right, so probably I should look on eBay to get another one of these, but <laughs> they were selling for 30 bucks. And being cheap and always looking for a good uh, good deal, bargain, I decided, well, maybe I can fix it myself. So I started looking closely what this capacitor was, and from the pieces I was able to figure out that it was the same as the, the second capacitor on the other side, across from it. And then I was able to read uh, all the information and found an online store with free shipping and ordered two of those. So now this is old as well. So 
you know, the second one was only is a pennies more compared to the first one. And I, I thought, you know, if the second one blows, I can, I'll have another spare. 100 microfarads, 16 volt, 105 Celsius electrolytic capacitor. And the size, and I, I co measured uh, the size of this one to make sure I was getting the right one. Five millimeters in diameter and seven millimeters tall. So I ordered and they came in and they look like they are the right ones. So I'm going to take this blown one out and then replace with this one and hopefully it's going to do the job. Okay, let me connect my soldering iron and then let's warm it up. My soldering iron has warmed up. Uh, but here is the caveat. These capacitors have a polarity. So if you look here, one of these legs are shorter. And then also on that short side, there is a white strip with those little arrows pointing down. So that's the negative side. Let's first get that blown capacitor out. Careful not to touch anything else. I'm going to build up and push. I may need to use my third hand to pull it out. Let's see. I'm going to need that. Third hand. My handy helper. Grab it here. And then while I am Heating it up, I'm just going to pull it a little bit on that. And really, it will give out and then come out. Okay, here we go. We did it. This shaded area here, this, this side is the negative side as shown on the picture inset I'm just displaying now. So the negative goes into that area. Okay. Now I have to trim this a little bit because this is way too long. I'm going to cut it about this side to this length. Okay, let's do it. I hope I didn't cut it too short. We'll see. I have another one. I'm an idiot, so I cut the first one too short. I'm glad I bought two. Now I don't have a spare one, but this this is this seems to be the right length. So let's try it again. This side is the negative side. Goes in the shaded area on the PCB board. <coughs> <clears throat> so while I'm pushing it, I'm going to heat this up. It came out of the other side. Just have to clean up the extra solder. And hopefully they won't be connected in the middle. So I may have to file that area a little bit. I need to get my little screwdriver to clean up. Let's make sure that these two blobs are not touching. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm scraping off any solder between them. I think they look okay. And the capacitor is in place and not moving. So let's put it back into its case and try it out. Something like this. Goes here. It's on top. Here are 
are the little screws that hold the case in place. Just going to put two of these for now in case I have to reopen the box. Doesn't work. Okay, that's good. Let's try it out. Here's the battery. Here is the charger I'm going to use, but before I'm using it, I just want to make sure last time I checked it for its voltage, but I'm going to check it again, just in case. So I'm not applying too much or too little voltage. Here's my multimeter. And if I remember it right, inside is positive, the outside is negative. And it's showing about 12 volts, correct voltage. Good. So now, I'm going to connect the battery here. Let's see. <laughs> Moment of truth. Let's press that power. Start. Oh, it starts by itself? Oh yeah. No, I, well, once I pressed it, it is blinking now. The red is blinking fast. Let's see if that's correct. It should say something on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Green blinking, power and battery are connected. Red blinking, charging. Red and green blinking, balancing. Solid green, full charge. Both LEDs flashing rapidly, error. Looks like it is working. The red LED is blinking. So it is charging. Yes, hopefully the other one doesn't blow because I have an, another capacity that's unusable now because I cut the, that's too short. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dummy like that. I'm an engineer and I should follow the cardinal rule I learned, you know, measure thrice, cut once. Yeah, I, I didn't even measure, just eyeballed it. Okay, let's give it uh, some time. Well, it's great, it's working. If you look, you will see the solid green, meaning that the battery has fully charged. So, I'll be flying soon, and expect another video on my channel in the series of RC Oldies But Goldies, reviewing this Carbon Cup SS. I never got the chance to fly it seven years ago, and hopefully I'll be flying it soon. So stay tuned and see you next time. Stay safe.